I am Anna Wilsos, and today we are going to be looking at another Zero AD replay. Uh, this one, once again, brought to us by Grunjas, and of course we are going to see some, uh, some interesting action here. Something very interesting, something that I think everyone will be very interested in seeing. Uh, something dealing with uh, the game balance, but uh, we'll we'll see when it uh, finally loads. We'll see. We will all see. Here it comes. Okay, let me just uh, pause it right at the start so that I can clue everyone in to what's going on. Again, it is a conquest game. Locked teams, allied victory, ceasefire, uh, and map conditions, and 200 population limit. Okay. Six players, Gurnias, Nigel87, Kizatom, Makako, XD Gamer, and Raptor. Now, for the purpose of keeping everything smooth, I'm just going to refer to them by their colors so that uh, nothing gets mixed up and let's just make sure that everyone knows who the teams are team one is blue yellow and cyan team two is red green and purple so let's just Get right into the action, then. So I guess it, we could call it an East and West game. Some people start in the East, some start in the West. But uh, I guess we're going to find out how things work. Work out here. Oh. Um, some issues. Okay. F for some reason, game was having some issues. But uh, everything is all right now. So we're seeing an early move by the Cyan player building a storehouse. Oh, no, not no, that's a farmstead. Um, I was guessing before I actually saw the pop-up appear. So a farmstead and a storehouse. Let's see opening moves of the blue player. Farmstead and storehouse very standard and we are having a house by the yellow player the yellow player is already playing the game playing the meta game here and doesn't really need a storehouse right off the start because of having a worker elephant now of course a storehouse does allow for upgrades so getting a storehouse is probably a wise choice eventually and red player getting a storehouse farmstead and barracks straight off from the start right at the beginning barracks we are having the ptolemies here the ptolemaeans the egyptians uh, greek egyptians of course and purple player is getting a farmstead and a storehouse green player farmstead and storehouse already going after those animals out in the wild back to cyan player cyan player has a worker elephant but uh, this worker elephant isn't currently being put to use the blue player is beginning to build houses, however, not as fast as we're seeing the red player build them. Um, the yellow player is moving for an early barracks. And the red player is continuing to build houses. Looks like the red player really wants to get uh, perhaps that population cap up high pretty early on. And the purple player is already building houses but uh, not at the same rate as the red player the green player is building the first house so we're seeing we're seeing everyone 
tends to have a, around the same ideas of what uh, the best things are to build early on. You build your storehouse, you, you build your farmstead, and you build, and, and then you start building houses. And depending on what you want, you may want to build an early barracks. But uh, we're going to see whether or not that pays off. Okay, let's just take a look. Yes, uh, Yellow Player is continuing to build houses and is not chaining them, but instead choosing to uh, build them in this manner, which could technically be slightly less efficient than just chaining them, because it means that the workers have to travel all the way to the end to build them, instead of building the first one and then traveling on. But uh, I guess if you're playing a game, it uh, can be a little bit problematic because, of course, you can't really pause a multiplayer game. Anyway, the red player has already begun to build farms and is in the process of building more houses. No surprise there. Some on the edge of the territory, even. Okay, no... No big moves yet. Let's take a look at the resources. Okay, it looks like the green player and the yellow player. Yellow player and cyan player are really hoarding up the food. The wood, uh, cyan player has a lot of wood at the current time. And not much stone or metal has been gathered. Here we see more houses. Look at that, the red player is playing the fast game. These uh, camel archers, they can be pretty dangerous. We're going to see how they turn out this game. Blue player is beginning to build the barracks that are very important, of course, to have at least one barracks. It's very important because you're going to need it eventually. Let's see, who ha who doesn't have a barracks? Okay. Cyan player doesn't have a barracks. Green player doesn't have a barracks. And purple player doesn't have a barracks. Okay, so they're, they're around half halfway barracks. Barracks in the north. Oh, what's this? Okay. It's just uh, some hunting expeditions. Yes. Looks like the yellow player may be exploring a bit. Choosing to come through the forest here. Oh no, he's gathering. But uh, that's probably not the best place to gather. And here we see the yellow player has become engaged with the red player. The red player has plenty of camels. Could be seeing an early, early camel strike here. Camel rush. But uh, the purple player is finally building some barracks. The green player has some houses. Not currently in the process of building anything though. Resources are not quite yet at the level to enter the town phase. Oh, but look at this. It looks like the Cyan player is capable of entering the town phase. Of course, it may not be good pacing to enter quite yet, but uh, we'll see how that turns out. And the purple player is building a second barracks. Let's take a look back up to the red player. The red player is gathering around a farmstead. Oh, what is this? Okay, it's just some some hunting. The yellow player is pushing forward 
outside of this territory, but uh, this worker elephant means that there isn't going to be much problem from this. And he received a blue player continuing to work diligently, having built up those fields. Who doesn't have fields? Let's take a look. It seems like everyone's building the fields. Okay. We've reached that point in the game. Oh! And we have reached an early attack. And yes, it is indeed a camel rush here. Early camels pushing in. Moving across the territory, attacking the rear. Killing all the women. This is going to hurt the yellow player's economy severely. The blue player isn't taking action. The yellow player is going to have to defend, to defend himself in order to deal with this. The elephant is dead, and of course those elephants, they aren't the cheapest to replace. They cost uh, 150 food, uh, which this early in the game is something that you can't really spare, especially if you're under attack. And the red player is hiding in the forest. The yellow player is still alert. Seems like security is at a high. The red player is pushing around. The red player is in the process of getting more reinforcements. And there it is. Blue player has entered into the town phase. We're probably going to see the blue player become more active as events begin to unfold. And here is the red player. Oh. Moving in on the yellow player. Attacking from a distance. Look at that. That's quite the distance to attack from. But uh, the yellow yeah, player see? is able to defend. So let's take a look at uh, this battle over here. It seems like the red player is possibly at an advantage. Yes, that definitely seems to be that way. But uh, the red player is losing troops as well. However, it seems like the red player is reinforcing. And look at that, that flanking maneuver. The yellow player isn't going to be able to recover from this quite quickly anyway, and is now retreating toward the civic center by the looks of it. Yes, see? But it, it isn't going to go very well for the yellow player from here on out by the looks of it. The red player has continued to build houses and is in the process of producing yet more troops. The red player is moving into the center. The cyan player has entered into the town phase and has a barracks. Let's take a look. The blue player it continues to be active. So let's let's take a look at the resources. Food-wise, oh, look at that. The green player and the purple player have both been stockpiling quite a bit of food. Wood, the purple player, um, is on the top of wood currently. And the other resources haven't really been exploited too much quite yet. And let's take a look. The limit. Okay. Okay. Very well. 
Is the red player going to attack the green? No, the blue player, perhaps? There, a fight is emerging in the south. The blue player is engaging the green player in battle. But it doesn't seem like it's going to go very well. Meanwhile, the red player continues moving toward the blue player's territory. Perhaps to launch an attack. Here's some, some lads out here. Yes, Steve. Mining. And now they're coming under fire. The blue player responds immediately by pulling back some troops. The blue player is also pulling back cavalry to defend to defend the town center. These troops aren't going to be able to deal with uh, all of these camel archers. Just look at them, 38 of them bearing down and more coming. Yes, this is not a good situation for the blue player. The yellow player has only begun the recovery process and isn't really going to be able to help out quite yet. The cyan player doesn't seem to have that large an army currently, but is in the process of building some defenses. Purple player is bartering. The red player doesn't seem to be in the process of attacking directly, not quite yet anyway, but is perhaps searching on the outskirts for means to attack the blue player and to harm the blue player's economy. And here he comes reinforcing once more. The blue yeah, player see? is sending anti-cavalry. The red player retreats in order not to get uh, slaughtered on the battlefield. The battle emerges. Yeah, see? The red player continues firing. The blue player sees that the situation isn't very advantageous and gathers the troops together. The red player begins converging troops together and is just firing down on the blue player's troops here. And here he comes, continuing to fire. The blue player is building a marketplace. Let's take a look at uh, everyone's situation here. Very economical. Nothing special here. There is a marketplace. No marketplace in red. Yellow is still recovering. And Cyan is being attacked by green. I think that's very important. Yes, Steve. The green player is attempting to deal some damage onto the Cyan player's troops here. But uh, the Cyan player seems to be able to defend reasonably well. Meanwhile, the red player is absolutely shredding the blue player's lands and troops. How many yes, women are still out there? There's 21 women outside of the Civic Center. The red player continues to reinforce. Meanwhile, the blue player isn't very effective at killing off the red player's troops here. So it isn't going to work very well, very well for the blue player here. A defense tower is built, being built. There is already one in the north. But it seems like the red player has an advantage in firepower over the building capabilities of yeah, the blue player here. I wouldn't be surprised if the blue player loses a lot of troops here. A lot of the women are stuck outside. Very unfortunate for the blue player. The green player is attempting to attack the cyan player, but it isn't finding too much success. 
The red player is moving off. And now moving along the edge of a blue player's territory. Now pushing back in. Moving north. Perhaps converging with new reinforcements. The yellow player is still recovering. And it doesn't seem like the yellow player will be able to be of any use in battle. Anyway, not quite yet. And here it is. The purple player has decided to take the center. We'll see how that works out. It seems like the Eastern Alliance definitely has the upper hand here. But the Cyan player is still alright. The Cyan player hasn't lost too many troops yet. And uh, still has a stable economy. Meanwhile, the blue player is constantly under harassment by the red player. And I think it was a very wise strategy of the red player to decide to attack the blue player once the yellow player's economy was destroyed because that means that if you destroy two players' economies, it's just going to weaken the team as a whole um, while taking the time to actually take out a player might actually mean that it gives the other players the chance to really build up their economy and build up their armies. So it's important to keep the other opponents down and to not focus too heavily on one opponent, although in some situations that is warranted. And here it is. More firepower. Red player is losing some troops and is pushing in slightly to kill a lot of these women. The blue player is in some real big, really big trouble here. The purple player has successfully taken the center but hasn't chosen to reinforce it additionally. Meanwhile, somehow the blue player has acquired the resources necessary to advance into the city phase. And it looks like the red player is now attempting to destroy the blue player's outlying structures. Meanwhile, the blue player is continuing to attempt to build defensive structures. The blue player still having the skill to continue fighting even under such heavy attack. The red player hasn't built too many buildings uh, since we last looked, but uh, a lot of them seem to be houses. The yellow player, nothing new here, still recovering. The green player is building a blacksmith now and has oh, a temple. Yeah multiple barracks and seems to be rapidly gathering all this metal and stone. The cyan player has a temple at the edge at the edge of his territory and is now building some elephant stables and if the cyan player gets those elephant stables up the cyan player may be able to attack or defend more heavily. We're going to see how that works out. The red player, currently not active over here. Continues in a constant attack on the blue player's territory. The purple player hasn't really attacked anyone yet, but the purple player definitely is in a position to do so. We're seeing a blacksmith being built in the center. Oh, what's this? Another military colony. The purple player definitely is grabbing up quite a bit of territory here. Uh-oh. What's the red player doing now?
pushing north. The green player has reached the city phase, and look at that, the purple player is sending out some troops. What's this? Some uh, Thracian mercenary swordsman. And the red player has reached the talent phase. Here it comes. Force has circled all the way around the back to attack the fields. The red player continuing this heavy siege of the blue player's territory. The purple player attacking the cyan player, but the cyan player is capable of defending himself. Is this house unfinished? I think it might be. Purple player is stealing away the cyan player, the cyan player's market. The red player is moving south, perhaps attacking the cyan player. The market has been captured and torn down. This is a serious blow to the cyan player's economy and the cyan player's ability to uh, to barter. The green player, meanwhile, has begun attacking the cyan player. The red player is continuing to move around the blue player's territory. The blue player has begun building a fortress. Look at that. We're seeing a very close together build. Defensive structures all over the place. All the buildings are clustered together. Definitely a close together build here. And uh, the red player has begun some new construction projects, building some blacksmiths, quite a lot of them in fact, and some defense towers. The cyan player continues to deal with continuing attacks by the green player. Look at that. It yeah, seems see? like the green player has plenty of troops in the action yeah, right now. But uh, they are they are losing steam as the cyan player continues to reinforce to fight this battle. The red player is sending more reinforcements over to this cavalry. Ca oops, slip of a tongue. Camelry archer force. And now. The red player has decided to actually attack buildings and is noticing the blue player's fortress here and seems to actually have the firepower to stop its construction. The blue player is, is going to have a serious problem now being unable to build this fortress. And that's it for the replay. The blue player has resigned, and that's all we're seeing. This is where the story ends, and I can assure you that I don't think the Western team was going to win after this anyway. But uh, I think that's very enlightening to the power of those camel archers. And look at that military score. Wow, surprisingly, the green player is really up there. But uh, the red player definitely, I'd say, was the MVP of the team. Being able to both 
entirely destroy the yellow player's economy and stop the blue player in his tracks. Well, let's take a look. Look at that. That's a lot of units trained. And a lot of them were cavalry. And that's where it was at. And that's why some people say that uh, the camel cavalry, the c camel cavalry, no, camelry, the uh, Ptolemaic camel archers are a bit overpowered. That's what some people say. And the reasons are because of their speed and, of course, being able to get them straight out of the gate early on in the game. A lot of people say that that is overpowered. Now, whether or not that is overpowered, I'll leave that up to you, my audience, in the comments section below. Uh, please do not get ultra-violent. But, uh, look at that economy score. We can see the yellow player followed up a bit and started getting harassed. The blue player started getting harassed. The red player was focusing heavily on military and didn't really go too much into uh, the economical states of things. And the green player, really, towards the end of the game, started attacking heavily. And the cyan player just had to try to keep up with the green player. Meanwhile, the yellow player essentially got put out of the game really early on. But yeah, I'd say Red Player was MVP here for um, Nigel87, to be exact, was the MVP this game. So anyway, thank you all for watching, and I will be seeing you all next time on Wiltos Over and Out.